in this video, we are going to look at um, non-deterministic finite automata. Uh, this is a generalization of finite automata we looked at last in the last video. Uh, the finite automata we defined in that video can be called deterministic finite automata. Uh, what it means by deterministic is that uh, uh, from a current state and the input symbol you read, there is exactly one next move. Okay, so that move is determined. Hence, uh, that uh, finite automaton is deterministic uh, finite automaton. So for non-deterministic finite automata, it means that uh, there will be more than one choice for the next move. In other words, the next move is not uh, determined. So you have several options to go to the next move. Hence the, uh, the important thing for this kind of computing device is how to determine or how to define acceptance. So what do you mean by acceptance? Okay, so now let's first uh, look at this slide. In previous definition of finite automata, uh, given the state Q and the symbol A, there is a unique next move. That is the transition delta is a total function. And we can extend this transition to allow multiple choices for the next move. In other words, instead of a unique next move from delta Q comma A, which, which goes to the next state, we will allow delta Q comma A to go to a set of states. Okay, so it belongs to the power set of Q. So actually that is a set of states. So this forms, a, this forms a computation tree in a way like this. Okay, so uh, let me open up a screen. So you start, uh, let's say you start from Q0. Let's say you have the first input symbol, x1. Right, uh, let's say x, your input string is x, which is x1, x2, up to xn. So then you have not just one choice, but you have multiple choices to go to the next move. So let's say this is Q1, uh, one. Q1, two, let's say Q1, D. Okay, so D of course, uh, uh, is less than the number of states you can go. So then let's say on X2, right? So this goes to the next day. So then on X2, maybe I can put X1 on the edge. So that's easy to see. So let me put Q0 here. So this is X1. X1, you can go. And then here, on this, on X2. You could go to the next state. Q21, Q2, let's see, two. Likewise, 
for each of these, you have these choices. So this is a tree. Sometimes we call it a computation tree. Okay, so then for each tree down to the, the leaf, so this is X in. There will be a lot of them. So, so this going in, going there, right? So for each of these, if one of them is a set state, let's say this is a set state. If there is a path, if there is a path that ends up at a set state when the entire string is red, then we'll say that this X is accepted, okay, by this non-deterministic finite automaton. So for instance, uh, this may not be, so this may not be a set state, so this may not be a set state, and this may not be a set state, but as long as there is one path that ends at the accept state, then we'll say that this input is accepted by this machine, by this finite automaton. Okay, so now let's look at uh, the formal definition of NFA. So similarly, uh, similar to DFA, NFA is a five tuple, okay, this is still the same as the DFA, meaning as the FA we look at in the last video, uh, that is deterministic, that uh, is for deterministic finite automaton, so uh, we call that DFA. So Q is the same, uh, so set of states the same, uh, alphabet is the same, Q0 is the same, initial state is the same, a set state is also a set of states. So that's the same, except the transition. The transition is a function, but the output is a set of states instead of a single state. Okay, so that is the difference between NFA and DFA from definitions. Okay, so in other words, transition is, uh, it maps a current state and a symbol. Now here we allow empty strings. So in other words, we allow this machine to not read anything and change state. Okay, and then the next, move would be a set of states. Hence, it is going to an element in the power set of Q. So this is still a function, but this, the output of the function is a set of states instead of a single state. Q0 and F are the same as DFA. So what we need to, need, what we need to do is to define acceptance as we saw in the previous, uh, black, uh, in the black and in the white board, uh, the, to define acceptance, we just need to see whether there is a path that ends at an accept state when the entire input is read. Okay, so from the language, it is still the same as DFA, except the uh, uh, in the DFA, we use equal here. In NFA, we use a member of because we, we just need to look at one particular pass. Okay, as long as there is a pass that ends at, at that ends at a accept state. Okay, some other states may not end. If you go to the other states, it, in the end, you may not end at a accept state, but that's okay. So that pass is not accepted, but 
for as long as there is a pass that's accepted, then we say that X is accepted by this NFA. Okay, so uh, then we let L of N to be the set of all strings that's that, such that that string is accepted by N. Okay, so this is a formal definition. Now let's look at an example. So uh, let L be a language consisting of four binary strings containing a one in the third position from the end. Okay. Um, so what that means is, um, Okay, uh, what that means is, uh, so for instance, uh, you will have a one here, then no matter, so for these two, I don't, so it could be either zero, one, zero, one. And then I don't really worry about what's in front of this one. So, uh, so this example, the the one I gave here, so this is a long, so it's one, and zero one, and you don't have this. Okay, so 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 for this either zero or one, this is either zero or one, and in front of it I don't care. So then it is a state diagram, okay. Uh, so this, so this question mark just means that it could be zero, could be one. Okay, there's something in there. So I need to change this uh, to, okay, uh, we don't have this. Okay, so Q1. So we're gonna start here. So Q1 is the initial state. So Q1 on zero goes to Q1. And Q1 on one goes to Q1 and Q2. So we don't need to worry about empty strings. We just remove this. So that's Q1. So the output is always a set of states. Okay, and then on Q2, so Q2 on zero goes to Q3 and Q2 on one also goes to Q3. So let me put Q3 here. Okay, and then Q3 on zero goes to Q4. Okay, and then Q3 on one goes to Q4, and then Q4 on zero, nothing. So there is nothing. So usually we just use a hyphen to indicate, we don't go anywhere. So I'm going to uh, fix this slides for you guys. Okay, so that's this example.
Oh, let's move. Okay, let me erase this. Zoom sometimes doesn't work very well. Okay, so let's look at another example. So, uh, so here we want to look at a, uh, a DFA that accepts the same language described on the previous slide, which means the uh, the third symbol from right is one. Okay, so so now we are going to use states to remember the current status. Okay, so what we are having is we look at the third symbol. So from right should be one. So that means we have several options by looking at three symbols. So we could have, uh, so, so this looks like this. Okay, so let me, like that. Let's say this is my input string X. And then this is a, The last is three symbols. Okay, and then I don't. Uh, all right, so what I want the string that to be accepted is I have one here, and I don't really care what this two what symbols in this two is they all accept states so that means i have the following accept state one zero zero one zero one 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 zero one 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 so these are all four accept states and any other states are not accepted so then I have for these three the total number of patterns is eight of them so then I'm going to use these patterns to remember our current status so that's uh, that serves a purpose of memorizing what you are for the for the last three uh, symbols. So we have, we use a sub, subscript to indicate uh, which string we are in, which substring of this, uh, this last three uh, symbols we are in. So we have Q000, we have Q, so let me just add it here, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 1. 0, 1, 0, and 0, 1, 1. Okay, so at the beginning, we'll start from all zeros, okay? So from all zeros, so when you have killed, so you are here, and so, so you start from reading from here, right? And when you read this, if it's a zero, okay, I'm, I'm, I haven't read any one yet. So I, I look back. And then when I read one, so that means now I could have, I have read one, so I'm going to go to zero, zero, one. And then from zero, zero, one, I'm going to see the next one. And when I read zero, and I'm going to go to, uh, so this is one, zero. So that's what I have, so one, zero. And before that is still zero. And from here, if it's a one, zero, one, zero, if I read one, that becomes, uh, 
if I read one, that becomes, so this doesn't move, right? So this is, becomes zero, one, zero, and I have read one, so that becomes one, zero, one. So that's what it is, okay? You think about this is shifted out, okay? Uh, so, so zero, one, zero, when you read one, you add a one in between, you shift out. So that's one, zero, one. And if you read zero, that becomes one, zero, zero. You shift it out from here, okay? So as you can see from here, of course, it is a set state. And if it's a one, that means zero, zero, one. You shift it out, you get zero, zero, one. And from here, if it is one, then you shift it out, that becomes zero, one, one. Okay, and if it's a zero, uh, we already talked about that zero. Then from here, if you read zero, it becomes one, one, zero. If you read one, that becomes one, one, one. And then from here, if you read zero, zero, one, and one, that shift it out, becomes zero, one, one. Okay, so once you are in here, if you read one, then of course you just keep looping. If you read zero, it becomes one, one, zero. Okay, similarly from here, if you read zero, it becomes one, zero, zero. If you read one, that becomes one, zero, one, right? So this uh, is a DFA for the language. Oh. Uh, we don't get in the previous slide. So as you can see here, uh, DFA has more states, okay? NFA has less number of states. And DFA, each state has a very good, uh, unique, uh, memorizing a unique pattern, okay? So now we can imagine that NFA and DFA are equivalent. They accept the same languages. So first, of course, uh, DFA is a special case of NFA because the output of each transition is a single state, which of course can also be viewed as a singleton set. Hence, it is a special case of NFA. And uh, <clears throat> as we saw uh, in, the, in the previous two slides, particularly the first example, when we built an NFA to accept the language such that the third symbol is one from the end, and that constructing an NFA is much easier to work with. Okay. And uh, but the good thing here, though, they don't they accept the same things. In other words, NF, NFA does not increase accepting power. Okay, so that means that uh, for the regular languages, we can either use DFA or NFA to study, to study them. <clears throat> so here's a theorem. So for any given NFA N, there exists a DFA M such that L of M is equal to L of N. So in other words, they accept the same regular languages. And the proof is straightforward. Uh, it's by construction. The, the idea is to treat the output of a transition as a single state. So then of course you get more states. Uh, so you get two to the Length of Q, many states. So the number of states, Q prime, in this construction is two to the length of Q, but of course, not all of these states. Uh, useful, so, uh, uh, but in this construction, we just consider all of them. 
So this is exponentially many more states. Okay, so, uh, and then the transition will be, now remember for each state S, which is a set, okay, in this NFA. And uh, so this is a set, so we have to consider all of the states in S that on A going to somewhere. So that's delta of QA. So this is also a set. Okay, so this is a set of states. Okay, so this is two to the Q, or we can even write it as a subset of Q. And since we allow uh, empty string as input, for instance, if we have an epsilon here, then these two states are considered equivalent because you can move from Q to P without reading any symbol. You can just change. So Q and P are equivalent. And then we are going to find so when, when we are in Q, we're going to find all such P. For instance, if you have another one that says R, then we'll include that R as well. So this is also uh, equivalent to R. So that means we are going to use a closure. So this is a E of, uh, so E of S, is a set of all states Q such that Q is reachable from S by epsilon, by epsilon, by empty move, by epsilon arrows. Okay, so from any state in S. Okay, so so that's e. so so that means now we we have to because they are equivalent, so we have to consider all of these. So that's it. So that is the output of these deterministic. Uh, FA, DFA, and then the, accepts the initial state is Q0 of NFA with everything that can be uh, reached, uh, everything that's reachable from epsilon uh, input, from, from epsilon arrows. And then the uh, set of final the set of accept states will be S that contains an accept state in F. So anything that contains an accept state in F, then it will be considered as acceptance, uh, as accept state. All right, so this is straightforward. So this is, this is easy to see that uh, uh, this deterministic FA accepts the same language accepted by N. So this is straightforward. Okay, now let's look at an example. How can we convert a NFA to a DFA? So here we have a NFA, so this is NFA. All right, we want to convert this NFA to a DFA. So we first look at all possible states. So all possible states here, uh, all possible subsets of states here is two to the, uh, is eight of them. So we have empty sets. We have a singleton one, two, three. So we get one, two, three. Then we have a subset of two elements, one, two, one, three, and two, three. So we got uh, one, two, one, three, and two, three. Finally, we got all of them, that's one, two, three. Because uh, initial, drawing, you may not have these nodes laid out in this way, but uh, uh, finally you do a, arrange a little bit that looks better. So that just make it look better. But, but nevertheless, so now let's see how we go through this 
uh, construction. So from on empty string, okay, so this is the initial, so this is it. This is the uh, empty set. So for AD, it doesn't go anywhere. So then it just go to the go to itself. And then let's look at one. So one is the uh, initial. Okay. So now you have initial, but one three is also uh, the the the. I'm sorry, sorry about that. So, so one is the initial state and also is a, a set state. So for the initial state, we are going to look at is an E closure. So that's a one and three. So this is the initial state. And this is also a set state. So one itself is a set state. It's an E closure is also a set state as long as one is in it. And then of course, uh, any sets, that has a one in it. So this is a one, two, one, two, three. They are all accept states. Okay, so put a double circle on those. Okay, so now let's look at one. One on A doesn't go anywhere. So that means I'm just go to the empty state. So which means this doesn't go anywhere. And then one on B goes to two. So one on B goes to two. Okay, so that's what it is. And from two, and uh, it doesn't, it doesn't have a, a epsilon arrow. So you just two is it? You don't. The e of two is just two. So from two on a, it goes to two itself. Um, and then you look at, so on A goes to two itself, but two on A here, you also goes to three. So you combine them, so that's two, three. So that means on A, you go to two, three. Go to two, three, all right? And then two on B goes to three, and then three, uh, <clears throat> doesn't have an absolute error to going out. So that's three. So two on B goes to three. So now from three, let's say on A, it goes to one, but the E of one is three. So that means three on A goes to one, three. And three on B doesn't go anywhere. That means it goes to the empty state. Okay, so now let's go to one, three. So one on A doesn't go anywhere, but three on A goes to one and one epsilon that includes three. So so one three on A goes back to itself. And then one on B goes to two and three on B doesn't go anywhere. That's the empty state. So empty state and two, uh, you, you combine them. So there's a set of subset of two, set of two union, set of zero, empty sets, that's two. So that's on B goes to two, All right? So we already seen this. So now let's look at two and three. So two on A goes to A and also goes to three. So that means, uh, and then look at three, three. So two on A goes to two. Two on A also goes to three. So that is two, three. But then you look at three here, three on A goes to one, E of one is three. So that's two, three union, one, three. Uh, that's one, two, three, right? So that's on A. And on B, so two on B goes to three. 
okay, and uh, the E of three doesn't have any, so three on B doesn't go anywhere, so that means the union of these is still three. So now let's look at one, two. One on A goes to two, also goes to three. And I'm sorry, one on A doesn't go anywhere, but two on A goes to two and three, so go in here. And one on B goes to two, and two on B goes to, so, so here one on, B goes to two and two on B goes three, union one and three is, I'm sorry, union two and three is two, three. So finally we get here. So one, two, three. So one on A doesn't go anywhere. Two on A goes to two, it also goes to three and three on A goes to one. So union all of them is just one, two, three. And then one on B goes to two. Okay, and then two on B goes to three, and three on B doesn't go anywhere. That's two, three. So that's that. Right. So actually, construction of DFA from NFA is just an algorithm, straightforward algorithm. Okay. So uh, from the previous slide, we saw here that not all states are reachable from the initial states. For instance, uh, for, for this one, it's not reachable. You start from here, you will never end up there. And uh, since you'll never end up here, this one will never be end up with. So that means these can be removed. And also this one, two, is not reachable. So you can remove them, remove all non-reachable states to simplify it. Okay. So this is a reachable, sorry. So you can start from here, go there, go there, go there. But this is not reachable because there is no incoming edges. This one is not. There's no incoming edge. So these two are removed. So remove these two because they are not reachable. Okay, so we just remove them. So after removing them, what we are end up what we end up with is a simplified. DFA. Okay, so now we can uh, uh, revisit closure properties for regular languages. So last time we proved that regular languages are closed under union by construction. Now using by construction from DFA. Using a Using NFAs, it's a lot easier to do this construction. So regular languages are closed under regular operations. So first we look at union. So the construction is straightforward. So we let N1, now because A, let A1 and A2 be regular languages accepted by respectively DFAs, N1 and N2 with N1, uh, being Q1, Sigma1, the other one. Actually, these are uh, because they are, we can assume they have they are on the same alphabet. So let's assume they are on the same alphabet, which is Sigma. Okay, but they have two different transitions, two different initial states, and uh, and uh, two, uh, so we want to put one here. Okay, so two accept states. So to union them, we just look at, <coughs> we just create a new initial state. 
okay, Q0, which is not in Q1, nor in Q2. Then N would be the set of states, Q1 union Q2, now this is a non-deterministic, plus a new state Q0. And now we assume we have an empty string in the input, so that's sigma. And uh, uh, we could have a uh, sigma here. Oops. We could have the uh, M. Sorry, we could we could have this is the epsilon. This is epsilon. So then, uh, because they are all n, uh, I'm sorry, uh, when it, this is 2L DFA, but they could be NFA. So let's say this is NF. This is a DFA. We should use, okay, change it. Maybe I will just change it to M1 and M2. All right, so don't worry, I will make this clear. I will fix this in a slides that I'm gonna to give to you. Remove this one, remove this just sigma, and I'm gonna call this M. Call this M because it's DFA. We use M to represent DFA. So now we construct an NFA from these two DFAs. Okay, so, so that means that we just add so it's Q0 on empty string, I can go to Q1, Q2, and this is the initial state. That's what this is for. Okay, and then the rest of it is just uh, do whatever this M1 and M2 does from Q1 and Q2. The next input will just move accordingly, and then the accept state will be um, will be uh, uh, is one of, so either in F one or F two. So both of them, okay, are accept states. So this is easier to draw a diagram. Draw a diagram to illustrate this. Okay, so this is N1, uh, we call it M1. Uh, this is N2. For deterministic, we, use, we can just call them M2, but this is a notation. So as long as we know this is DFA, this is DFA, that's fine. So we combine these two by adding a new initial state. And they can either go here and go here. Okay, so so that's a union. So that it's a union of two regular languages that accepts. Okay, this NFA accepts the union of two regular languages. Likewise, for concatenation, we can say this is the first one. This is the second one. We can just convert all of these, just make a link. So this is all epsilon. So this is all epsilon, just go into this, that's it. So this is a very straightforward. So this is what we are having here. And for star, so what we need to do here when you, so what we just need to do is just put back the empty, so let's loop, just loop, 
Okay, so that's what we have here. So uh, that's straightforward. So now we know that uh, regular languages are closed under union, under the union operation, under the concatenation operation, and under the star closure operation. So that is the end of this video.